something for acceptance. Amen. I'll talk a little about crucifixion because God's death had already been prophesied. Amen. Crucifixion was not only one of the most disgraceful forms of death, but also one of the most dread, dreaded and painful method of execution in the ancient world. Amen. And understand when they crucified a person before they died, they would torture them. Amen. The Bible had already spoke about what was going to happen to Jesus. That he was going to be beaten. He was going to be beat be beyond recognition. But the scriptures say that there was no, not a bone was going to be broken in his body. And the way that they beat Jesus and they, they took nails and they pierced it in his hand and they pierced it in his feet. Anybody know anything about your hands and your feet? They got a whole lot of bones. And it's hard until when you're piercing something that you don't break a bone or you don't shatter a bone. But the Bible says there was not a bone to be broken in his body. That was already a miracle right there. 
And when the scriptures say they had already broke the men that was on the left side, one of them on the left or the right, they had already broke their legs, but they couldn't do nothing to Jesus. Amen. They called it a crucifixion because they were make, making sure that we get rid of this troublemaker. They considered Jesus a troublemaker because, number one, he called, they say he called himself a king when he hung with heathen. He called himself a king when he had no home. He called himself a king when he had no crown, when he had no throne, and they could not understand that. But to understand being a king, being a savior, God came down as low as a person could come so that lowly people like us could be saved. Amen. Thank you, Lord. A lot of times we don't understand because we go through some things in life and there are, are some crazy stuff that can happen to us in our life. And you all, we often uh, question our relationship with God. And you say, Lord, if I'm one of God, people, one of God's children, why do I have to suffer the way that I have to suffer? Did God let us know that we need to arm ourselves likewise with the same mind? Some things God want us to go through, and we was talking about it in Sunday school class this morning. Some things that you go through, it's not for you, but it's to help somebody else out. Oh, God. Lord, don't you know I'm going through enough of my own? God knows that the other folk have to help their own self out. But some things God wants you to go through so you can help somebody else. Lord, why am I going through this, Lord? Why did my life, why did I grow up the way that I, I, I grew up and, and, and experienced the trouble that I, I experienced in my life? And God knows the thing that I went through in life. God knows most people didn't make it through, but God, you allowed me to be sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, God, God is just so awesome when, Lord, you already know that I didn't marry this thing right here, but you allowed me to be here. They, they, they call it a crucifixion, but the Lord called it a wedding proposal. Now, what are you saying? Because you call it God knows the thing that I'm going through. It ain't even worthy for anybody to have to go through. And they say that they're a child of God. But in order to get where God wants you to be, in order to be the bride that he's calling for, baby, you got to prepare yourself. Yeah, that's one thing I was telling the saints this morning. Everybody wants to get married, but nobody want to be prepared for the marriage. Everybody want to say that I got a husband, but don't nobody want to face the consequences of getting a husband or a wife, not realizing that you got to learn each other. Amen. Amen. You sometimes you listen to folks and say, "Girl, God knows I, I don't know why I got married," and I know a lot of times you might have said that to yourself. But just know this one thing: you in order when you in a marriage, it's a struggle. Come on, somebody. Two people coming together, trying to be one person. So you ain't going to always, if you get married, think that your wedding day was going to last the rest of your life. You got married for the wrong reason. Because if you got married to remember your wedding day, and most of us have a beautiful wedding day. You know how it is with a bride. She has to take her time. You know, she said that this is not going to come out there any, any kind of way. She's got to look good. Amen. The, the bride, most of the time, I told folk, when you go to a wedding, most of the time, everybody is waiting. Everybody is there. The bride is there. The groom is there. The party is there. I mean, the groom is there. But the bride, it seems like she's just taking her lovely time because all of us, that's just her day. Amen. And this is what I look at God because you be, you're going to have to go through something become, before you become a bride of Christ. You're going to have to endure something in order for you to be called the bride of Christ. There is some stuff that you're going to have to go through. You're going to have to be crucified, Lord, no, every single day. Paul said, I die daily from this, from this flesh. In order to be God's bride, you got to be beautiful. Some of y'all might say, well, Lord, I, that, that just excludes me. That ain't, that ain't the beauty that I'm talking about because the Bible said he beautified me with salvation. So in order for us to be beautified, in order for us to be what God wants us to be, he has to break us down. He has to make us. He has to mold us into the people that we want, he needs us to be. Amen. The church is called the bride of Christ. To stress the purity we should maintain, as well as the sense of anticipation 
We are awaiting the coming of our bridegroom. Now, it's said that when you get married, that, that your husband, that the groom should not see the bride until the day of the wedding. And they go so much so as to make sure that you can see the groomsmen, you can see the bride made, but when the bride come in, everything has to be closed off because she's gonna make her grand entrance. Amen. Number one, she's gonna make sure that become a bride, a lot of times we got a certain dress that we wanna wear. And you might not weigh the weight that you want to be able to weigh in order to get into the dress. So what you have to do, you go on what you call a wedding diet. Amen. There are some folk that God knows. I, I don't want this. I don't want folk to see how out, out of shape I am. So I've got to make sure, you know, you got brides that will starve themselves because they have a certain dress, uh, Melissa Johnny, that they want to put on. So when I go out there, man, I want to be the best looking bride there is. I want to, when they, when they open up that door, when every eye fall on me, I want every eye to be on me because I'm going to be looking some kind of good. That's the mindset that we have. Under y'all come and get, be ready for marriage to say, I don't care how I look. Amen? Every bride, every woman, every woman that's ever been married, don't you want to look nice on your wedding day? But what did you have to do? You didn't just prepare the day before. But it, it takes some preparation for you to get where you need to be at. So it's, it's some steps that you have to go through. You want to make sure that you, you pick the right best man. You want to make sure that you pick the right uh, maid of honor. You want to make sure that everybody that you pick is going to compliment you in your wedding. Because this is going to be my day. And I, I, don't, I don't want no jacked up folk in my wedding. You know how it is. And that's just like God. He don't want no jacked up folk in his wedding. So we, got, we have to prepare ourselves. So in order to prepare ourselves, we do not prepare ourselves like we do as a natural bride. Amen. The spiritual bride has to take off some things. They have to clothe themselves with humility. You got to be able to endure hardness as a good soldier. These are some of the steps that you have to go through in order to get yourself for God, get right for God. He said, I'm going away for you. I ain't coming, I ain't back here yet. But I'm going away for you to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also because I want the best for my bride. I don't want her just going to anywhere, but when I set this place up, I want her to be ready when I come because I'm going to receive her unto myself. Now understand with Jesus, his bride is like this. He don't give you tall, short, dark, light, medium built, not built at all, or what. He don't care about any of that, but he wants your mind to be altered. Amen. Good God Almighty. He, he wants your mind to be renewed. So in order to have a renewed mind, you have to come into a jacked up situation. When you come into church, when you come in here, you all messed up. You ain't ready for nobody. God, I don't know about you, but when I came in church, I was just all messed up, man. I wasn't ready to be married to more nobody, and yes, I'm going to be Mrs. Jesus one day. You won't be Mrs. Jesus, I'm going to be Mrs. Jesus one day, because he already let me know when he's coming back, he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. We neither male nor female, but we're going to be one in the spirit of Christ, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, so he's not coming back looking for a character God Almighty but he's coming back looking for somebody that he can call on to be my bride without a spot or wrinkle my daughter was in a wedding and then she had already paid a certain amount for a dress and, and she needed the dress just to be this themed out. That's all. Nothing else. Just to be themed out. And God knows, I think they charged me like 60 some dollars to steam. I'm like, I didn't ask you to alter the dress. I just asked you to steam the dress. 
Stuff will cost you. It just costs you. It's, it costs you something about for being a bride of Christ because you ain't got no money for one thing. So you could not pay for this. So God said, come without money or gold. I'm not looking for that. But I'm looking for somebody that can change their life. I'm looking for somebody that, that have this, this, this got rid of themselves. I'm looking for somebody that has cleaned themselves up and have robed themselves with righteousness and have robed themselves with holy, not just a holy look, but a holy life and a holy heart and a holy way of living. Not somebody that just coming into church, but I'm looking for somebody with a changed life and they know we're near the church. Oh God, you got a changed life at home. You're different at home. You're saved at home. You're preparing yourself at home. You're preparing yourself on the job. You're preparing yourself everywhere you go because I want to be the bride of Christ and God knows he chose me when he could have chosen a whole lot of other folk but Mother Rogers he chose me so I am delighted I am just overwhelmed just to be one of his I am just over delighted over delighted just to be a child of God just to be his bride so when he comes back for me honey I want to make sure I'm looking right Yes. Oh God, but right now I got so much junk that's inside of me. I need to lose some spiritual weight. What are you, what are you saying? I got so many weight and these sin that that's so easily beset me. That's holding me out where I can't wear the robe that he wants me to wear. So I got to lay aside. Oh God, there's some stuff in my life that I got to get rid of. I sometimes maybe I don't want to get rid of, but if I want to be the bride of Christ, I got to get rid of to so call that soul. What the enemy does, and you know how it is when you say that you're going on a diet and God knows the minute that you say you're going on a diet, that's the time that you get the harvest. God knows. Oh, God, if you say that you're going on a fast, and when you wake up on Wednesday morning or whatever your fast day is, the first thing that all pops in your mind is something to eat. God knows. I ain't never drunk as much water as I ever drunk in my life, baby, because I'm trying to stay away from soda because I'm trying to get to a certain weight and we having the biggest loser challenge here and I'm determined that I'm going to win but God knows that every time I turn around that big gulf is still calling me and it's hot outside and they got all kinds of service that I, I just want to test out <laughs> oh, oh my God and then and then they go so far as having a free slurpy day oh God you know how they tempt you wearing before you ain't even had no free day but now they got a free slurpy day and God knows every time I look on Sonic they got a different type of Question that's how that I just want to try. Oh God, but I understand if I'm planning on winning the biggest loser challenge contest, I gotta know I gotta stay away from the session or do I'm gonna be slushing. Oh God. So I got to understand that. So there are some things that I got to lay aside. There are some things that I have to withdraw myself from because even in coming over here and I say that I want to be saved, but every time I would do good, Paul looked at it and say, evil is always Amen. present before Amen. me. The thing that I supposed to be doing that I find myself not doing but I've got to keep saying in my mind that I want to be a bride to Christ although they thought it was a crucifixion but I call it a wedding proposal God proposed to me over 2,000 years ago when I got into church he told me that he wanted he wanted to be my bride he wanted to be my husband but there were some things that he won't want to allow in his house Oh God, baby, in order to come into God's house, you got to get rid of some stuff. In order to say that you're a child of God, you just can't pick up a Bible and say that I'm saved now, baby. But you better know the word. The Bible says, hide the word in your heart that you will not sin against thee. Sometimes you might not even have the Bible close to you. But if you love God like you say that you love God, baby, how many of y'all first fell in love and you first met your mate, baby? When nobody else looked, you wouldn't even look at nobody else. Oh, all you can see is your lady. There goes my baby. You don't know how good she looks to me. And we see all of these things. And nothing else can we put our eye on anything else. But I see my baby. Good God. Don't she look good. Oh God. And one thing about when you're in love for real. Oh God. When you're in love for real. It don't matter how many pounds you gain. Because the more pounds you gain. That's the more I love. Good God. Oh God. That's when you're really in love baby. Because a lot of times. We marry the ones that we marry on, on, on wedding day. And when she starts having our kids and God knows she goes from 36, 24, 36 from a one liter to a three liter then you think you want to get rid of but you married a whole pack 
past you, baby. You got to understand, love is not in the body, but love is in the motion. Oh, oh blossom, that's why I come today to let you know, baby, when you get married, and that's why God said, that's why I love my wife. I'm married to the backslide. What are you saying? She don't do everything I ask her to do, but I'm married to her. That's my baby. I'm, I'm trying to get her right. I'm trying to get her where she needs to be, so that's all right. She going to pick up some stuff. She going to pick up some things, but guess what? I'm giving her opportunity to drop it. Oh, God, drop it like it's hot. You better let it go. Oh, God, you better be able to drop some stuff and understand and look at the whole picture. Oh, God, when is your wedding day? I don't know, but I'm getting married. Good God Almighty. Oh, my oh, when is God coming back? I don't know, but I'm ready whenever he comes. Oh, God, how long is it going to take? I don't know, but he already promised me. He gave me a promise ring a long time ago. Oh, God, I love God because he's not a man that he should lie. He told me he's going to marry me, and he's going back to that bad place for me. That right here, where he is there, I may be also. So I'm anticipating. I'm waiting. I'm putting some stuff off because when he comes, he's going to say, there goes my baby. Yeah. And he ain't us to neither. Uh, but we have to be to the place where we have to learn how to deny ourselves. How do I deny myself in a world of stuff around me that everything is looking good, sin is looking good, oh God, the world is looking good, women is looking good. I, I guarantee you, man, there's some pretty women out here, but let me tell you something. I'm only dedicated to one woman. Amen. Uh, now, I'm going to say that again, brother, because not when I'm not past, ain't nobody pretty out here, ain't nobody, I just look at my wife, brothers, come on there. You know sometimes, every once in a while, you sneak a peek, but it's all right if you sneak a peek, but don't keep peeking. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. You know, you ain't trusted, you know, and you, you, just like I told him before, you done had a, uh, your husband, when he first got married, he had a six pack, and now his six pack has turned into a keg. You got to love the keg, baby. Amen. I mean, see, we get we get mad because of the, of the, of the, the, the physical outward part. But, baby, how many of y'all know the love has to come from the inside? Oh, God, I don't care how big you are. Oh, God, I ain't, I ain't ashamed of my wife. We get to a place where we get ashamed of folks. When they get a certain way, we get ashamed of But that's my baby. You ain't, I ain't asked you to love her because I'm loving her. Amen. Amen. That's what God is telling us. Because I love the world. I gave my life. Oh God, I know it was messed up. But while we yet was a sinner, he died for us. While he yet was, now he proposed to us, Mother, Mother Robinson. He died for us, waiting for us to get right. He gave us a proposal. He told us what he's going to give to us. Now all we got to do is get in line to receive our blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Preparing to be a bride. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Everybody wants to meet the bridegroom. But don't nobody want to wait. There are sisters out here that that, that is said I do to some folk because you couldn't wait because you felt that your biological clock was running out and I'm getting old and anybody else gonna want me so we'll settle for anything but baby let me tell you something don't settle for anything God made you more than what you think that you are so you just don't accept anything sister 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 that's waiting for me just don't accept anything my brother needs to call him Repping bridges, and that's what you got a lot of time. Just repping bridges, man. Don't nobody want to work. And uh, somebody say one time, when you ever be a man, the first the question that a woman should ask him, do you love work? <laughs> Not like. Because you hope you don't like a whole lot of things. But when you love something, that means you love it in spite. You love it when you're sick. You love it when you ain't feeling work. You ain't feeling good. So do you love to work, brothers? Okay. Then maybe you have a chance of seeing the sun on his life. That's the brother that ain't married. If you already married, then you, you dead. And say, and five of them was wise and five were foolish. Here we go. We can all be wise. We can all have be virgins. In other words, we may all be pure, but then you got some foolish folk. Amen. You got some folk that make bad decisions. Amen. Amen. So what do you do? You better make sure that decision that you make, and that's why I tell people, they feel like that just because they're in church, that's my short ticket to heaven. They no, 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 no. 
because you become foolish because you think more of yourself than you think of God. What are you saying? Because the first thing, a lot of times you look at people, the first thing they tell you, they tell you a big lie. Yeah, baby, I've been saved for 30 years. Tell the truth. You've been in church for 30 years. But how many years have you been saved? You're working towards salvation. Paul said, I have not obtained yet. I'm not there. You got to crucify this flesh of flesh. You got to crucify this thing. It's some stuff that you got to kill that you know you got to kill it. We walk around with stuff. Oh, oh no, that don't bother me. Oh no, I ain't got no hatred in my heart. Oh no, I'm just fine. But you lying to yourself because you got a problem. So in order to be able to get rid of it, you got to acknowledge it. Then we get mad with people anointing. Oh, they that. I don't know who they think they are. They think they saving than anybody else. Folks we get mad at your, your anointing, Brother Vernon, because, you know, they just don't understand. You see my glory, but you just don't know my story. I ain't trying to front who I am. I'm trying to front who God is. Good God Almighty. He's a very present help in the tribe of folk. That's who I'm trying to, that's who I'm trying to promote. I'm not trying to promote myself. God said if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men unto me. Who will help me help Jesus? Jesus. Amen. Amen. People talk about Newsome ministry, this ministry, and that I ain't got no ministry. Oh God, my ministry is to bring souls to Christ. You ain't got to put a name. I'm Christ's ministry. That's what you call me. Anything else, it ain't my ministry. It's God's ministry. Got folk dying because we don't take the time to sit down and try to explain to folk and tell them what salvation is all about. We so quick to write folk off and tell them they ain't saved. Then instead of sitting down and tell them what salvation is all about, instead of sitting down and let them know, but maybe God know I didn't just get here. I'm still struggling. Matter of fact, hey, don't let the rope fool you because I'm still struggling with some stuff. But I want to be a bride of Christ. So I understand there is some stuff that I got to lay aside. There are immaturity things that I got to lay aside. I got to get rid of that. There are some people that have attached themselves to my life that I need to drop. Yeah. Say it again, mm-hmm. Amen. There are some folk that you have attached. This is what I said. You have attached to your life that you just got to let go. Amen. If you want to be with God. And in, in order, how can two walk together except they agree? If you are in a country of people that's always, always down with God and always saying, what well, God ain't going to do that? Why God allow this and why God allow that? You attach yourself to the wrong folk. I'm going to be a bride. Hey, I can't get around folk. That, I'm, I'm around divorcees and folk that told me, everybody you talk to, that and God. I ain't trying to get around. I'm trying to be a bride. We associate ourselves with the wrong folk. We get around the wrong folk. And folk in this church, yeah, girl, so when I got married, God know my husband played a trick on me. I thought he was this and I thought he was that. And maybe he was. But that just lets you know, maybe the next time you need to be aware. Amen. God give us opportunity. That's why God says, some, let me tell you something. The, the homeowners and, and the adulterers, I'm going to do it. There are some folk that God said he's going to do it. You don't work. Because there are some situations that only God knows, and not God knows. I can't, I can't put my hand on. Well, pass away. Let me tell you something. I can only speak for me. Amen. I said, Lord, you have placed me here, and God knows when you get into the church. How many of y'all know when you got into the church? When we first got saved, when we, when we first got engaged, that we, we was, if we was enlightened, and we was, we was doing a great fight of affliction, yeah. and, and God knows we ain't worried about what nobody say about us because I'm a bride of Christ. Can't let, let that be. He chose me out of everybody. He chose me, and then we start getting around negative people. Then we start getting another choice. Where before we were seeking to seek his spirit, we no longer do that. Come on, somebody. We no longer seek his spirit because 
my mind got from earthly things to natural things. So all I'm doing is in this life we have hope with all men most miserable. So I'm seeking the natural things. So the crucifixion, I don't want the crucifixion because it's too much pain. But if you understand the crucifixion, then you want to understand the wedding proposal. God said he was going away. He said that he was coming back. He was coming back looking for a church without a spot of wiggle. This is what God said. So if you can endure that, oh, you won't be a bride. But he's taking too long. We put him in the same category as we put John. We put him in the same category as we put all the other people that have, have, have told you stuff and that have lied to you. So we put God in that same category. But I just love when the scriptures say he's not a man that he shouldn't lie. Brother Robinson, he said he's going to do something. You better believe he's going to do it. If he told you a mosquito can pull a plow, hook it up and just watch the mosquito pull it. That's, that's all. That's just as simple as that. That's all you got to do. I don't know how it's going to work. If he told you he's going to knock that ball down, just go to the wall and just wait till it fall down because he said he's going to do it. But we don't trust God like that. We don't believe God can do those things. We can't. We don't believe God can deliver us. We don't believe stuff like that anymore because we don't got too calm minded. Yeah, but then we come no spiritual good. While the bridegroom tarried, here we go. Seem like God. How do y'all feel like God is just taking his time? Yeah, come on, God. If you're coming, if you're going to marry me, are you going to marry me or what, man? Lord, you, and we talk like this, come on, God, if you're coming back, if you're going to marry me, but some of y'all ain't ready for God to come back yet. You better thank God for the time. I'm telling you, you better thank God for the extra time that he's giving you to make sure you lose some stuff because we holding on to some stuff and God knows we got a lot of junk in our trunk when well, you need to clean out the trunk. While the bridegroom tarried, this is what we did. They slumbered and slept. What are you trying to say, Pastor? While God is tearing and waiting on us, we sleep in the church. We sleep in the assembly. We sleep in the idol. It's taking so long. But baby, you better act like that wedding is tomorrow. <laughs> God Almighty. How many of y'all have been anticipating something and you can't wait till tomorrow? It's when you're it's tomorrow, girl, and God knows I can't wait. Lord have mercy. Seems like the day is taking so long. That's what we need to live with God as if tomorrow is going to be waiting then. Good God Almighty. That's the way we're going to have to live. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Why midnight? Because a lot of folks sleep at midnight. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose. And this is what's going to happen with us. When we're going to find out that we don't ran out, we ran, fell short and stuff. Then all of the virgin rode, rode, arose and trimmed their lamps. Everybody got a lamp. But some folk all ran out. Come on. You'll know it until you need it. Ah. And they trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil. For our lamps have gone out. You know why? You thought it was a crucifixion. You didn't take time to bring extra, so you only did the bad minimum to thought you would get over. But how do y'all know you need a lot to take you over the top? Amen. 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 For our laps have gone out, but the wise said, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy yourselves. You go by your own. Because I struggle too hard. In other words, you can do whatever you want. I struggle too hard to get what I have. I struggle too hard to get the relationship that I have because God allowed me to go out and get, get some oil for my lamp because my lamp went out. But he allowed me to come back before the call was made. So baby, God knows, just like I did mine, you got to do the same thing. The Bible said, except you come in the way you come as a thief and a robber. Nobody excited about getting, getting married anymore. Nobody excited about a lot of folk. I'm not saying nobody, nobody. Nobody mean nobody that's doing nothing. Nobody excited.
excited about getting excited about getting saved anymore because God knows I got too many things on my plate. I got too many things that I got to do. I got, I'm too much caught up in this life until I have became all men most miserable down here and I lost my sight of the purpose up there and God knows God is getting ready to come back and he's waiting for his bride to get herself right and he said behold I come quickly and my rewards are with me so he's waiting for us to get to the place where we understand sometimes you got to care a little extra because you don't know what the devil gonna do because the Bible said when Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil when he came out by time the devil got through with him God knows he had to come by and be strengthened and sometimes baby you ain't got time for no one to strengthen you the song said you got to encourage yourself oh God there are some times in your life huh, when you don't lose focus on God huh? Lord I believe that you're coming back huh? and you're closer to your coming as, as more than it was yesterday huh? God knows can't to see the clouds gather huh? there's a brand new feeling in the air huh? don't let it be said too late huh? I preached a message one time huh? I've gone too far huh? and I stayed too late huh? and God know and I got I stayed too long huh? What do you say? You're coming to the church. You are stay too long. Oh God, and when God has come for you to get yourself right, you have got back too late. And he's going to say, depart from me. You workers of iniquity. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us your all. For our lamps are going out. But the wise said, no, not so. Lest there not be enough for us. Sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they which were ready went in with him. The marriage to the marriage, and the door was shut. They thought it was a coup for school for fishing, but it was a wedding proposal. Here is my day. Today is my day. Now is the time of salvation. Put the excitement back in your wedding day. Yes, amen. Number one, he is coming back. Yes, amen. Number two, he's coming back for a prepared people. Yes, Number three, if you ain't ready, he has prepared another place for unprepared folks. Yes, oh God, so he ain't gonna leave nobody out. You want everybody gonna have a place to go, but if there will be a place of torment, or you want to go to a place of eternity. Oh God, oh I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever. On the saving grace. On the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. My cares will be paid. Ha! <laughs> 
say, but hey, God, I can't wait. Uh, uh, everything, listen, everything is already set up. Uh, turn to uh, I'm getting ready, y'all. I just got to show you my appearance and show you how it's going to be. Oh, God, when that first trumpet sound. Uh, oh, God. Uh, when that first. I want to introduce to you uh, a, a, a bride uh, that has been went through trial and tribulation. Uh, I'm going to take you back to Revelation because Revelation said, John said he saw a number. Then he saw another number. And he looked over and said, Who are these? Oh my God. These are they who come and have been in trial and tribulation. They have endured the cross. They endured all the pain. These are they that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. These are they that are on the call and say, Well done.
And I know them all. And you know how a lot of time folks go through much hustle and bustle in a wedding until you can't wait till the wedding day come. You can't wait till it's over because there's so much stress on you. But guess what? It's over. It's over now. Oh God, I feel like I can make it because it's over now. I'm going to be all right. And I already know that I'm not a good man because he already showed me how good he was when he took me and made something beautiful out of my life. He didn't wait until I got right, but he got right before I got ready. I'm a bride. Ain't nothing stopping me. Huh? Y'all can say I'm crazy if you want to. But baby, ain't nothing stopping me. Huh? I'm, ain't nothing gonna stop me. My family members. Huh? And some of them think I'm crazy anyway. Ain't nothing. Ain't none of them gonna stop me. The people that I know. Oh God I said, oh, he preaching a new gospel. He, he preaching something different, but ain't even stopping me, baby, because I got a relationship with my God. Huh? And he already told me that he prepared me a place. Huh? And he already know what it took for me to be saved. Huh? So you stay on your little high horse. Huh? And you can continue to ride your little hobble horse huh? and I'm going to continue to go along the way that I'm going. If this ain't that, I'm going to hold on to this until that comes. Right. I'm not. I'm going to hold on to this until that comes. Right. He thought it was a crucifixion. Yes. Yeah. But God advised me that it was a murder for hope. And he said, be ready. You in church? But that doesn't mean that you're ready. Every once in a while, before midnight come, just trim your lamp. Check it out. Let us see if it's working. Some of y'all don't some of y'all don't try to see what you possess until problems come. But sometimes do a pre-maintenance test. Try it. Do a pre-maintenance test in your life and see. God, no, if you still got the power now, just, just, just pre-test yourself. Oh, God. As a matter of fact, you ain't got to pre-test yourself. Just be around, be around negative folk, and they help pre-test you. Oh, God, they help pre-test you. But I made up in my mind. I'm here to stay. There's a lot of folk out here that's still hating on y'all. Hating on me. But you know what? You cannot focus on that. Folk talking about you, don't matter what you're saying, in the church, doing wrong, doing good. How do y'all know people talk? Amen. Amen. The young man was coming through town one time. He was riding with an old man. And when he first came through town, the little boy was riding on, on, the, on the donkey. And the people in the town said, that don't make no sense. And that little boy let that old man walk like that. Next time they came through town, the man was on the horse, on the pony, and the little boy was walking. Then somebody said, that don't make no sense. And how that, how that man let that little boy walk like that? The next time they came to town, through town, folks still talk. That don't make no sense. Why in the world they walk with the, with the dunk ain't nobody around? <laughs> you just can't please folk. But I promise you, if you please God, you ain't got to worry about what folks say. Just please God. Stop trying to worry about what folks say. I dare you to please God. Please Him. He's so busy getting validated, and we ain't excited. We just sit here and don't even believe that we what we believe. We don't even believe in church, but we just sit here in the, in the motion. We just going through the motion. Just sit here. Don't care if you get here or not. If you get here, it don't matter. But I'm here. But we sit here and come in with an attitude and dare somebody to say something to us. That's sad. When you can't help yourself, it only wants somebody else to help you. Say. You are amongst the people now that God said you're going to see this. Amen. But Mother Robinson, I'm going to be a bride. I'm determined. 
I fell off the bandwagon, but guess what? I'm, I'm back on it. God knows I'm holding on for dear life. I thought about what Paul said when they got caught in that storm. He said, except these abide in the ship, they shall not be saved. They're not going to be saved. What is a ship? God called pieces a ship. They were only holding on to pieces, honey. But God said, except these abide in the ship. I don't see no ship. I'm holding on to a piece. But God called them a ship. God Almighty. If God called it a ship, I don't care. You holding on to a net wing. He, that's a ship. Oh God. Understand, man. We we got deals with the impossible. But that's why I'm excited, and I look at what God is doing in this place, and I say, Lord. Because I understand the movement here, you are allowing people to be drawn to the movement. I'm always going to say it. Not to me, but to the movement. It's a different from being drawn to me and being drawn to the movement. Oh my. The movement. What? The movement of man or the movement of God. Because one thing about it, when the movement of God, let me tell you, the spirit knows the spirit. <laughs> God Almighty, you ain't gonna stop. The spirit knows the spirit. And the spirit is subjected to the spirit. And spirit draws. Mm. Spirit. I love y'all. God knows I, I, I can't make no claim. If we don't get no fire up under us, we gonna burn up right where we are. The plan of salvation is here. Somebody said you fell in an overlooked test. He gave us a book. Look at the people back in those, they didn't have a book. They didn't have a word for the They couldn't go to uh, uh, St. John 3, 16 and encourage themselves by God so loved the word that he gave the only begotten son. They had to live that. These died in faith, believing the promise was going to come. He gave us the promise, and we are dying with the promise. I just hope, honest. Just like some of us go to the chiropractor and get a your spine can get, get out of alignment. Jesus is a spiritual chiropractor. And some of your attitudes need an attitude adjustment. Come on. It needs an attitude adjustment because the, the attitude goes like this. Adjust the attitude and you will walk like this. Walking up right before God because if that attitude is not adjusted, baby, you can forget it. If you can tell when the attitude needs adjusting. You can tell. And that gets wild. You know, you, you all double-minded in all your ways and I don't care and I don't care what nobody's saying. You got your shakes and don't even know how to stop it. Stop it. Stop madness. Because God died for you. He died that unstable folk can be stable. And we have made ourselves unstable when the stable is there and all you gotta do is come from it. And we'll see the bride. But before we do that, and I'm gonna put it this way, this is what I said when the night when I finished. Rejecting God is like staying in a burning building and say, I'm not worried about the fire. Thank my God. Rejecting God is like sitting in a burning building and you know the building is burning down and you say, the fire can't come here. That's what you're doing when you reject God. He didn't come here. It'll never happen to me. There's a lot of people in the grave before they die. They had that same thought that you had. It'll never happen to me. They did. But we got an opportunity to get it right. And we still saying the same thing. It ain't happened to him. He ain't coming back. But when he come forth, you cannot say that you did not hear. God has given preachers the word 
to preach unto the his people. But he said, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. We don't even have the knowledge of God. We don't. Because if we had the knowledge, we would be a totally different than we knew. So that's why I'm asking God to help me to keep my mouth shut. Because I'm still having a problem with talking. You know, it would be all day. Yeah, you know, you can, I'm telling on me. I'm still having a problem with talking. But I said, Lord, help me to keep my mouth on the rocks. Help me to keep my mouth on Help me to keep my mouth. Because nothing is going to stop me. I don't care who's here. God knows, as long as you can't stop my blessing. I don't care who here. I don't care because the devil is in here today. But he ain't stop me from getting my blessing on the burn. So I still got my blessing. It don't mean nobody else did nothing. I got mine on the day. Fighting, but we better go through Richard. Stay right there. We better go through Richard first. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not at all. Okay. Cozy man. Okay. Call the other one. Yeah. One more man. See, we go through those rituals when we, when God, when we just don't, don't, don't go yet. But now we go through all those rituals, and this is what the, the, the enemy is tempting you with. He's right. Cross that line. Here we come. They, they ain't say we don't go. Cross another line. Here we go. And guess what? Now curious minds want to know. Now you gotta understand, God did not kill that old nature. He just washed away the damn curse. So that nature is still there. Mm -hmm. That nature to look at stuff, and you know what stuff, man. I remember back in the day, man, I, I get a tote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got that? Back in the day, you know, I'm telling you, I mean, this be real. So a lot of y'all might not have did drugs or whatever, but I'm talking about real life. This is stuff that's coming into the church. So the priest can't, he, he cannot put his nose. The rat, he's talking about coming into the church. But you got a whole lot of folk that come in here that's dealing with stuff. And that's life today. And we try to act like it ain't dead. Act like it's dead because we folk that's struggling with some stuff. Man, you can really see it. But we gonna get beaten into the fact. All you gotta do is pray, 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 pray. I got you, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm back here. Yeah. Pray, son, pray. And all Lord, let me tell you something. Like he told me one time, he, he had a bottle sitting home waiting for him. That he that one, that one ain't right, but he would tell you. He said, Pastor, I couldn't get up here and work, but I already know I had a bottle at home. He said, but when he got home, he took it and poured it out. That, that, that's where the deliverance comes. You see what I'm saying? Because the temptation is going to be there. But God said, yield not into temptation. The temptation is going to be there, but don't yield to it. God going to bless you. I'm telling you, God is going to bless you. He's going to bless you. Watch what I tell you. Watch. He's blessing you right now. All, all the hell you going through with stuff that folk that you ain't got to go through hell with, but you going through it. But God said, after you suffer a while, you're going Look at you and wonder why you fail. They don't know that on Christ the solid rock I stand. Oh, you come on, somebody feel good? I mean, you know that I, I'm, I'm, you be part of that. You see folks standing and you know folks say that you're going to give up. You see them standing and you can see the breakthrough. And that's why I, I invest on too much of that boy right there because I already know, man, this is a matter of time. God, he's going to break through and God is going to bless you, boy. And God will to be looking around. And God knows not only going to bless you, but it's going to bless somebody else. Watch. Y'all heard me. Y'all heard me. Watch. Amen. Right, I said, look at evil, look at man, and I don't care what it's like, turn that memory, but you can stay up and look at a rapper. Be 
That's not going to change you like. But when God said, I got something, the king got to exert all that energy. <laughs> all right. Because if you do exert it, guess what? you going somewhere after you exert the energy. Amen. Y'all see it in the nightclubs and the parties and this and that and that and this. But God said, I'm going to release you from that and that. I'm, re I'm releasing you from that day. I'm releasing that, that stronghold that's holding you back today. I'm releasing you because you know that you understand if you thought it was a crucifixion, but God said, this is the way they propose. I'm proposing to you. Will you be my bride? That's what God said. Will you be my bride? I said, yes! 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 I'm about to make you feel bad. And I look at you, and it's strong. I look at you, and I see all of that. And don't you think God said, I ain't gonna forget your labor of love, and I ain't no prophet neither, but God said, I ain't gonna forget your labor of love. Don't, don't worry about it. After you suffer while I'm stabbing you, but baby, when you go through this, you're gonna know that it won't cheat, it won't walk a key, and it won't cheat, it won't that person out there. But just know it was God! Oh! No. No. God said, I'm going to show you something, Sister Barbara. How many, how many surgery you going to have? You done had hundreds of surgery. And get ready to have another one on soon. And God will look at it here. If you look at the body, the body is mutilated, cut, cut up. But God said, guess what? That's going to just be a memorial because you're going to drop you. Drop that thing. Good God. And the body that I will give you, I ain't going to know about the scaffold. The body that I will give you, I ain't going to know about diabetes. The body that I give you, I ain't going to know about cancer. I ain't going to know about bulls. Not the body that I'll give you. You think it's a joke. But you keep enduring. You keep pressing. I just want to encourage the ones to stay Amen. through. Yeah. Keep on. God knows the hurt runs deep. In the assembly, the hurt runs deep. The compassion is not there because everybody trying to rush hope through salvation, but this is a process. Process. This is not a rush job. Amen. Make me over. You make me over. And God, when you make me over, I'm going to be made right. There are many people that torn you down. Amen. But God said, I'm lifting you up. I'm lifting you up where you belong. I'm bringing you to the forefront to let you know it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. They thought it was crucifixion, but I'm giving you a miracle for I'm waiting for you to accept. If there is any exceptions in the house, then I don't accept. Let me stand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, a lot of times, I feel like Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah said, I don't want to preach anymore. I'm done. But when he got home, he said it was just like fire. Shut up in his bones. I got to do it. And the road to recovery is hard, y'all. Amen. That's a painful road. But when you can stand, and God said, whatever you're going through, it's in remission. That situation, it's in remission. We owe God a praise. It's in remission. The remission, the remission of sin that washed away the damaged person of the enemy. It's in remission, y'all. So don't let nobody make you feel bad. Your brother say, you know, he don't cry because he feel less than a man. But baby, let me tell you something. 
these tears are just a relief of the pain and the sorrow and the grief. Just know, God said, I'm going to bottle up every one of your tears. I'm going to bottle up the pain. I see your tears. I see your sorrow. I see what you want to do. I see your sorrow. But I'm going to bottle them up. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to bring you out. I love y'all. And whatever you're going through today, you can ask and pray to God. And I promise you this one thing. He ain't going to tell nobody about it. I promise you. Tell me your deepest secret. And I promise you, he will not tell a soul 